Let's have a look at section 2.3, valid and invalid arguments. So an argument is a sequence of statements, and an argument form is a sequence of statement forms. And we talked previously about the difference between statement and statement forms, which really boils down to whether you have some content there or whether you're simply using variables. Um, and sometimes it's helpful to use those statement forms, or in this section, argument forms, to focus on the structure rather than uh, the subject matter that we might be um, see in a particular statement or argument. So the last statement of an argument is called the conclusion. The statements that come before that are called premises. And let's look at an example. If x is odd, then x squared is odd. That's a premise. x is odd. Therefore, x squared is odd. That's the conclusion. That particular type of argument has a special name to it that we're going to see shortly here. Uh, before we get to that, that um, a symbol that you're frequently going to see in this section, and whenever we work with arguments, is this sort of three dots in the form of a triangle, um, and that's used in place of the word therefore. You don't have to use that, but uh, you're going to see that pretty frequently. So the argument form that we just looked at could boil down to, in symbols, just if P then Q, P therefore Q. And that has the name modus ponens, uh, which is Latin, and uh, the, the, the author of the textbook kind of get goes into that a little bit. It's, um, uh, what that means is method of affirming now uh, the title of this section is valid and invalid arguments um, so we need to talk about what it means to be valid so a valid argument is an argument form for which the conclusion must be true whenever all the premises are true and the way that we determine that is with the truth table so what you're looking for is, you know, uh, whenever we see all true premises, does that guarantee that the conclusion is true? If so, it's a valid argument. Uh, so the rows where all the premises are true are going to be especially important to focus on because those are the determining ones uh, about validity of the argument. And those we call critical rows. So whenever you're looking at arguments and determining validity, you want to set up your truth table, but you want to make sure you identify which rows are critical rows. Okay, so this is the truth table for modus ponens. So notice when we're working with an argument, we want to make sure we have a column for each premise and a column for the conclusion. Notice sometimes the premise, like we see here, that second premise is just one of the variables by itself. So we already have that column. So where I've labeled it as premise, that second premise, I've just copied that first column over again. Um, you, strictly speaking, you don't have to do that. You could maybe just label that first column in the table premise. Um, I prefer to do it this way because I like to have see the premises side by side like that um, and separate from the, the variables that are always going to be the first um, the columns in a truth table. But it's up to you as long as you can keep track and, and you have a column for each premise and a column for the conclusion. Um, th those are the things that really must be there. Okay, so looking at the four rows, there's only one where both premises are true. And so you see I've labeled that as critical row, um, and I've also highlighted that in blue. Um, and we look at the conclusion 
for that row and that conclusion happens to be true and that's what shows us that this argument form is valid. So another important example of a valid argument is modus tollens. So we've got another one with this Latin name um, and this is the method of denying so if we've got if p then q, not q, therefore not p. All right, so um, we're going to look at a truth table for that one as well. Let's look at an example first. If Doug's pet is a cat, then Doug's pet meows. Doug's pet does not meow, therefore Doug's pet is not a cat. That would be an argument that has that argument form. The truth table looks like this. Okay, we've got columns for each of our premises and a column for the conclusion. And once again, we've got one critical row. Uh, and in that critical row, the conclusion is also true. So that shows that it's a valid argument form. Valid argument forms are really important when we um, go forward in this course because that's what tells us um, how we can string together, you know, kind of a chain of reasoning when we write proofs. Um, we want to know that we can get from, you know, a couple of premises to conclude something new from that and that it's okay to do that. And that's what these valid argument forms um, do for us. They allow us to justify those things. Okay, so let's talk about invalid argument forms. So an invalid argument is one that's not valid. Um, so it fails that test that we've been talking about by, uh, where you've got at least one critical row where, where the conclusion is false. So the converse error is one example. You've got if P then Q, Q therefore P. The way I tend to remember that's called the converse error is that if you replace the original premise there with its converse, then it would be valid. Uh, but we're gonna show that it's not valid. There's another one here that I'm also going to show you a truth table for. Uh, the inverse error. So this says if P then Q, not P, therefore not Q. And likewise, if you replace that original premise with its inverse, then it would be valid. Um, the one key thing to understand is that the converse error, the inverse error, modus ponens, modus tollens, all look fairly similar. So it's important to understand which is which and know, you know which are the valid ones and which are not. Okay, here's the one for the converse error. And there are two critical rows. In one of them, the conclusion is true. But for a valid argument, you must have a true conclusion in every critical row. Uh, so this is not a valid argument form. Here's the one for inverse error. Also happens to have two critical rows. Uh, now you'll certainly see examples that have two or more critical rows and the argument turns out to be valid. Uh, but this is not one of those cases because we do have a false conclusion in one of the critical rows. And so that means we've got an invalid argument form. One other note uh, before we wrap up this particular uh, video is uh, at the end of this section, there's a table that's given that gives several valid argument forms and, and names them. Um, that's an important table to, to kind of bookmark and um, you'll want to refer back to that from time to time. That includes modus ponens and modus tollens, uh, among others. Um, those are also sometimes called rules of inference. So those give us um, these valid argument forms that, again, I said, 
are used to help us understand when it's acceptable to, you know, make us a, a certain chain of, of logic, you know, in the course of, of writing a proof, for example. Um, that concludes this particular video. Uh, we'll be getting into chapter three next. Uh, the first section is about predicates and quantified statements. See you in the next video.